Welcome to Cherry's World. My name is LaShonda Wallace, and I am an autism advocate. My son Johnny has autism. Autism does not have him. Coming up next, we will be speaking to an autism advocate by the name of LaShonda Wallace. LaShonda Wallace is the founder of LaShonda Wallace, Inc. She is also known as Johnny's mom. Miss LaShonda Wallace is out here advocating for children with autism and helping parents gain all the knowledge and answering a lot of the questions that your doctor might forget to answer. So please give a warm welcome to Miss LaShonda Wallace. This is Cherry's World. Hey, if you want to continue to support Cherry's World, Cherry's World podcast, shop Urban Intellectuals. Shop Urban Intellectuals under Cherry J75. It helps keep this podcast up for the magic word free. So if you're a supporter of Cherry Johnson and the Cherry World podcast, shop Urban Intellectuals. Shop urbanintellectuals.com slash AFF slash Cherry J75. That's urbanintellectuals.com slash AFF Cherry J75. Question Are you tired of unsanitary work facilities like restrooms, break rooms? Maybe even sitting at your desk with your allergies flaring up because the dust all around you is so thick you can write your name in it. Well, look no more. The answers to all your needs is here. We here at Special Care Janitorial have been servicing the Dallas Metroplex for over 11 years with a list of satisfied clients, small family-owned businesses, and large corporations. We stand on giving the type cleaning your mother would approve of. If you're seeking the cleaning with care visit our website today at www.specialcarejanitorial.com or reach out to one of our consultants at 469-772-0164 and always remember you're special because we care welcome to cherry's world Our next guest is here. Hello, Miss. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. I'm so excited to finally be able to talk to you. I've been looking forward to this day. Miss Wallace, aka Johnny's mama. Can you yeah. give us a little backstory and let our listeners know how you became an autism advocate? So my son Johnny, he's 13 years old now. And he was diagnosed with autism when he was four years old. And at the time, I knew nothing about it. They threw a word at me and I knew nothing about it. And so I started reading tons of books. What I realized is that, okay, the books were helpful, but my son would show me what he needed. So I just followed his lead. And so my reason for becoming an advocate is because when my son was in school, he was discriminated against and treated very badly. So I decided to pull him out of school and homeschool him, and I turned it into a business. I was like, you know, I'm sure there are other parents out here that have had these struggles and that will need this help. And so I'm going to turn it into a business to be able to help other parents like myself because I knew how I felt when I didn't have anyone to turn to, someone that knew a lot about it. And so I decided to create the business. That's beautiful. And when you say treated badly, can you be specific? Was he treated badly by his peers or by his teachers? You know, Cherry, I got to be honest with you. The children were never a worry as far as bullying or laughing at Johnny or anything. It was the administrators, believe it or not, the administrators, oh. teachers, principals, each teacher, all of them down the I, line. The entire IEP meeting. I believe it. And that's why I wanted to ask you specifically. I don't think that teachers are trained. First of all, teachers are not given sensitivity training. No, they are not. Unless they're special ed teachers, they are not trained to even identify learning disabilities, much Mm -hmm. less any other type of disabilities. Absolutely. I was told by the principal that they only had a requirement for them to have 40 hours of training. I was like, are you kidding me? She was like, only 40 hours. I said, there is no way that they can learn everything that they need to know about autism specifically in 
40 hours. No, that's disheartening. If you could implement something into the public school system, specifically for children with autism, what would that be? I would have a quiet room is what they call them in every school, every school in every state around the country, because Depending on where you live at, if you live in a smaller town like myself, they will not have the funding or they will say they don't have the funding to create the classroom for the children specifically. And it's a classroom where you will take them in so they'll be able to calm down because a lot of them struggle with hearing a lot of noise. It kind of, it gets them um, overly excited. And so you have to take them to this quiet room to calm them down. And my I fought to try to get that same class created for my son. And I was told no. I was told no. We don't have the empty classroom. We won't be able to get funding for it. Superintendent said no. I mean, I was given all kinds of no's. So I would definitely um, encourage uh, them to have classrooms like that for those children in every school system, in every state, because they will definitely need it. No, I'm sorry. That sounds like a crock to me, because in every school, there's always a room somewhere that's not being used at that time. That's how I knew that I was being just disregarded. Like we, it was, it was almost like a slap in the face, Jerry. Like you know, we don't care about your kid. Like they were very clear, without even using words, that we are, we don't care. We're not going to fight for your children. You can continue to fight against us, but we're not creating this classroom. And the funny thing about it is, uh, years later, I ran into one of his teachers at while we were on the playground. And she was like, I know you look familiar. This is Johnny. He's so big now. I was like, yeah, she was like, you know, LaShonda, I was his paraprofessional, which is a teacher assigned for him to be with him all day long, lunchroom, everywhere. She's with him all day long. He's never left alone. And so she was like, I went to them and asked them to create a classroom myself right after you did for him. And I was told no. And so I I got wind of it that years later they finally created a class for this one student and i was able to uh get that information because i was in a parenting group with that same mother and i was like you know i fought to try to get johnny that same class she was like the only thing that i had to do was go in there and ask one time i was like interesting wow and and can i ask what was the race of the lady who went and asked one time oh she was caucasian Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. I hate to point that out, but I just had to ask. Now, that's what drove you to homeschool, Johnny, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how how did you see everything just change through homeschooling? Okay, so the funny thing about it is they would always say, oh, we can't get Johnny to sit still. We can't get Johnny to do a paper for longer than a few minutes. We can't, we don't have his attention at all. As soon as I pulled him, pulled him out of school, I set up a place in the house for him with the desk. I was able to get my son to be still and pay attention until we were finished. Now he did, he, he does still have some flapping around that he does because on top of autism, he also has ADHD. So it's to be expected that he'll never sit completely still, but I get what I need from him. And they were saying, Oh, we can't get him to do that. And I'm like, well, as soon as I brought him home and started doing it myself, I was able to get him and his attention. And so they were like, well, maybe because he's in the privacy of his own home, you know, trying to disregard it. We're, maybe because he's in the privacy of his home, own home as to why you're able to get his attention. I'm like, that. there is no truth to that. Because my son would rather be able to socially interact with the children and be in a classroom with his peers rather than be in homeschool by himself. Absolutely. Well, I, I have a four-year-old and, you know, I homeschool and she don't hold still either. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I got um, I got two young boys, um, four and six. Yeah, four and six. Um, I don't know. I grew up in the 80s. So and the, all these labels and stuff. Now, autism is different, but all these labels and stuff wasn't just around back then. I, I just sure. I don't know any boy, four year old, six, five that can sit still. I haven't met one. So I just. I just, I just, my, I guess my question is why, why is it so quick to, to, to label, label everybody now? Like, why can't we just, why can't we just be kids and we just be adults and instead of just looking, cause you the same what? thing happened to my son. They, we got to see if something's wrong. Like why? Cause he can't, why, why? Because he, he's been sitting in a chair all day. And that's, I guess that's something mm-hmm. I kind of agree with Dr. Umar Johnson. I mean, me and him had a couple of battles, but 
And that's that's the mm-hmm. one I do agree with him on. Like so quick to especially black kids, they're so quick mm-hmm. to label us. Like the kids, just like the white kids. Like I don't get that. Absolutely. They I mean, I kind of feel like um there's always a target on the back for our children, specifically our boys. Um, because you can put him uh, right next to a, a Caucasian child and they will label, label him and say, oh, well, he just had a bad day. That's why he can't sit still. But then it'll be giving Johnny all of these different labels as to why he can't sit still or it must be something his mom's doing at home. Or I mean, I, I, have, been, I have been dragged through the mud, my name and everything. Um, by speaking my voice because I never sat in those meetings and I, I'm just not going to sit here and be quiet. And I had to, to, I had to have an advocate show me how to be an advocate. She would speak on my behalf and I have sat there and I refused to sign IEPs. So yes, I absolutely believe that they are quicker to label our children. It's disgusting. So do you feel like you've watched Johnny be discriminated against because of autism? Absolutely. And my reason for saying that is because um, the very last IEP meeting that I had for Johnny in the, the K through first grade school, there's too many children over here, so they have to break them up in, in schools by uh, grade K, K through first, and then second and third grade, they go to one school, and then third, uh, fourth, fourth and fifth grade, another school, so on, so on, so forth. And so the very last meeting for the first grade school the principal from the second grade school sat in that meeting and he was able to witness all of the back and forth. It was pretty much bickering. We never really got along there. I mean, I've never been in an IEP meeting that we didn't bicker up until now. Um, his last IEP, IEP meeting with Epic, his new school. And so um, I kind of felt like they were talking amongst each other before I came because when it was time for him to go to the second grade school, as soon as I walked around the corner to greet the teacher, she was uh, across the hall talking to another teacher. And as soon as I got around the corner, the both of them stopped talking. So I knew that they were warned, like, oh, here comes Johnny's mama. She, she is hot. Like, she, her attitude. I like that, though. I, I know. I like that because Johnny's mama is going to be Johnny's biggest advocate ever right. in life. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and I was not going to hush. So, I mean, that, say what you want, but this is my kid. And she was able to choose, Sherry, listen to me, choose if she wanted Johnny to sit in her class. Now, mind you, he was already assigned to a desk in her class. I met with her days before teacher parent conference. And she was like, oh, this is Johnny's desk. It's going to sit here. Johnny didn't sit one day in that classroom. How do you choose the child that you are going to teach. Didn't want to deal with me. And I wasn't just this mean mama, you know, raising my voice, my voice for no reason. You were mistreating my kid. No, and you're saying he is quote unquote behavioral problems. And see, that's the thing that gets me, Sherry. They say behavioral problems when he has autistic traits. Call them what they are. Oh man. And can you, th- can you tell me do not know or who have never spent time with children who um, have autism, what are autism traits? What are some of the traits? Okay, so the very first sign uh, that I noticed him not making eye contact, and at a very young age, he stopped babbling, like babies are supposed to babble babble, um, up until a certain age, and Johnny, I just remember Johnny never babbling. And for me, I thought he was just a quiet baby. I didn't think nothing of it. He was my first child. I knew nothing about being a mom, so I overlooked it. So eye contact, making no eye contact is a very big one. Um, Some of them may lose their speech or some of them will never speak at all. You know, some parents never hear mom or dad. Um, What's another one? Rocking back and forth. I noticed that. You'll sit on the floor and rock back and forth and not say anything. Head banging. Head banging was a big one for us. We thought we were going to have to put him in a helmet, but he stopped doing it. At a certain age, he stopped doing it. What's another one? Hand flapping, hand flapping, fidgeting, not being able to put the fingers still. Just like the fingers just go all day long. They're always in motion. Spinning. Johnny's spinning around in circles and circles. Walking on his tippy toes. That's another one. Oh, so many of them, Jerry, but those are like the target ones. Like wow. that I noticed. 
I was going to say, I've heard the rocking back and forth is like a self-soothing. Uh-huh, like yeah. Yeah, it's sensory, it's called sensory related. It calms him. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed that his autism can be controlled by his food intake at all? Absolutely. I've done the research about changing his diet and taking certain things out while adding certain things in. And they were really specific about the red color dye. Yes. That color red um, yes. that's in food. And you know, it's in so many different things. Now, the flip side to that is children with autism also will restrict their diet. My son eats a combination of about six meals in rotation all the time. I that's just go awesome. to him. That's awesome. But he has a good appetite and he's growing like crazy. Yes, you see how tall he is. <laughs> yes, so he is healthy. And I have to say, not only is he growing like crazy, but he is so intelligent. He's doing really well in math. Math seems to be like one of his favorite subjects. It has to be because he's doing so well. Yeah, he, Johnny, you know what? Johnny's learning something new every day. He's teaching me. I'm, I'm, the, te- I'm the student. He's the teacher. <laughs> I love it. And that's a misconception with people. You know, they think, oh, well, my child has autism, so school. Oh, no, no, no. As a teacher, I can tell you that one of my favorite students has a photographic memory and he has yeah. autism. Yeah, most of them do. Johnny will come in and like, okay, he, he loves movies and he memorizes all of the names, the whole cast. Like he came in here the other day and was telling me about Home Alone and he named the entire cast. First and last name. The real names, not the characters, the real names. I said, you know what? This is the misconception. This is the thing that people don't understand is that they are very smart, but you just don't give them a chance because you're so quick to label the bad behavior or whatever you want to call it, which is not a bad behavior. It's a trait. Um, right. but they're, they're very intelligent. Very. Like he thinks in pictures. The big picture in his head. Right. I, it's, I'm amazed. Like, I love the fact that you are really open and that you share your own story with the world on Instagram and you post all of mm-hmm. his, all of his certificates and things like that. We're cheering with Johnny. What's your I, Instagram? Oh yeah. Can you give everybody your Instagram? Yes. My Instagram is, but well, I have to, the business Instagram is incorporated. I N C dot LaShonda Wallace. And then I also have my private Instagram, and it's at Shonda Denise 29. And can you tell, if there's a parent out there whose child has been newly diagnosed with autism and you don't know where to turn, please reach out to this woman. She's so knowledgeable, and she will really help you. Tell them how to find you. You can find me on my website, and it's www.LashondaWallaceInc. That's I-N-C. Dot com. You can scroll down and it has a contact us button where you can push it and it'll send you straight to my email. Or you can call me. My contact number is also listed on the website so you can call me. I check my emails every single day and I will get back to you. And she's personable and, and full of knowledge. Courtney, do you have anything else for her? Um, I do, but I mean, it'll, it'll just be forever. I, I, I have a, my, one of my best friends, his son is, uh-huh. is autistic and uh, he, he spends so much uh, time with him. I guess my question is, I guess, well, I guess maybe you'll find a question in what I'm about to ask or what I'm about to say. So me and him were mm-hmm. talking about, cause he's married as well. And uh, he was saying it's kind of fucked, messed up how the situation is uh, financially. So he was actually thinking, I mean, we're all middle class people. We're not rich. We're not poor, but we're not rich. Uh-huh. Either. So he was saying, damn, it might be better if me and my wife just, you know, separate because then she would get, you know, me because then she uh-huh. would get the benefits because the because they're married. They're too rich to get the benefits, but they're <laughs> not. I mean, they're not poor enough to, you know, to. to, to Absolutely. You know what I, mean? I know so, exactly what you're doing. So, I mean, how do you feel about that? Because we talked, me and Cherry spoke with someone with, um, with HIV. Well, I, I feel like, like that was. I feel like this is this is the thing. Um, I have had so many conversations with couples that have gotten divorces and broken up just because they one they, as sad as it may sound, they can't deal with their child's autism. Damn! Wow. So, so they, 
they divorce and if a, that's how a bunch of the moms end up, you know, divorced single parents because the husband's like, I can't deal. And then, hey, flip it around. Sometimes the moms leave and leave the children with the husband. Um, medically, yes, it is astronomical. Um, these therapies will break the bank. I am grateful to have insurance where my son is covered. We don't pay anything out of pocket oh, okay. for the couple of struggle i ugh, i feel so bad for the couples that struggle i would definitely look into trying to get a secondary in- insurance like try anyway keep trying okay well i gotta take this part out i want to explain this part to you so um when I, I used to live in kansas city so he actually lived on the kansas side our our job was actually on the kansas side but it, the kansas city kansas and kansas city missouri are like 10 minutes apart so Mm. If he lived in Missouri, the benefits would be free. But because he lives in Kansas, which is only 10 minutes apart, 10, 20 minutes apart, he has to pay. And it's all the same insurance. Wow. So it was one wow. of those situations. Yeah. That's absolutely horrendous. That's I'm like, well, he, maybe he should go and move 10 minutes over. You know, it, it's a shame the decisions that you have to make to try yeah. to get the help. And I was I, actually, I was looking at a, um, a documentary about autism and the amount of money that we have to spend on these children until they're 18. And a lot of them, they say 18, but a lot of them can't even move out and function on their own at 18. They're in the house forever. Um, and it was up there. The number, I can't think about it at the top of my head at this moment. I have to go back and look. But it, I'm like, you know what? I'm not surprised. And for people like me, I have very little money. Um, I am not rich at all. Um, yeah, those therapies can really break the bank. I would definitely tell them to consider finding some kind of secondary insurance to cover at least if they won't cover all of it, at least some of it, because those therapies can cost mm-hmm. up to five and six hundred dollars an hour, yes. depending on which therapist, how much they charge, because they're individually charging their own prices anyway. And so, yes, absolutely. One, one more question. <clears throat> Uh, mm-hmm. What do you feel about the medication that they have? Because he told me that he doesn't really he he, he does he stays away from the medication that they have. He he's he's really um, a step on dad. He he spends so much time with. Them. Well, you, um, I think it depends on the parent. Now, I will say we started with medication. My son was about five when I started. You know, with no no knowledge of what the medicine would do. I. We, I, I took them off. I no longer agree with it for my son because it was, uh, it started letting my son grow female breasts, you know, oh, it started making him grow those. And the teacher, one day the teacher told me it was hard for her to wake him up from his nap. She said she was standing over him for, must have been five to 10 minutes shaking, shaking him and he would not wake up Please. until finally he just woke up. So I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this any longer. So I'm, I'm, I'm leaning more towards the holistic side anyway, in every way, um, changing my lifestyle, eating better, uh, stepping it up with meditation and exercise. And I've introduced my son to meditation and exercise as well. I don't agree with medicine for the, these children. Now, it's, like I said, it's up to the parent to make that decision. But for me, I definitely wouldn't go that route just based on the side effects and everything that's in those medicines and how some of the children um, have to depend on them for the rest of their lives. They can't function yeah. without them. Yeah. Wow. I'm blown away because the very system that claims that they're here to help you seems to do a lot more harm a lot of the times than help. I agree. Some you already know how I feel about this whole, we didn't, we didn't have the whole conversation. <laughs> Listen, we were in that inbox. <laughs> yes, I'm trying not to incriminate, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, oh, yeah. I didn't know about, about the, the breast and stuff on the baby and, and the teacher couldn't yes. look at her and I'm so mad. The teacher couldn't Absolutely. Read. Listen, and let me tell you this, Sherry, the only reason I found out about it, not because I read the pamphlet, because one day I was looking at it on C-SPAN, and they were finally talking about autism. And they had the whole CDC in there, and they were fighting against each other and all of those things. And it just happened to go across the screen, and my son was taking that very medicine, which I cannot recall at the top of my head right now. I erased it out of my memory. I didn't even want to remember. It's on a piece of paper somewhere, though. Um, 
But yeah, that was that was the only reason. Other than that, I would have been unaware. But I was like, you know what? He's his chest is going a little too fast for me. So I would have been like, you know, light on inside of my head to pay attention. Anyway, like, no, something's not right. And then he didn't even. I got to tell you, for me, it didn't even make a difference because he was walking around zombie like. I'm like, how is he supposed to learn if he's sitting in school zombie like? Right. You know, I, I just. What is the one thing that you wish people? would know or stop saying about children and adults with autism? You know what? I wish that they would would stop saying that it's some kind of crazy mental disorder. I have heard people say that they're just crazy. They just need to, like, you need to whoop them. Um, Oh, absolutely. Please stop saying that. These children did not ask for this. For the ones that do struggle with it, like my son's more high functioning, so we don't have a lot of the uh, struggles that we had when he first got diagnosed. But please stop saying that. Can Most I, of them. Can I, I ask know you the a question about that though? Huh? Yes. Because because I, I I didn't hear about autism until recently. Was it around in in the eighties, seventies, and stuff like that? Well, I um, actually, I was watching a documentary with Dr. Temple Grandin. She's an autistic doctor. And um, she has autism herself, and she's a doctor now. Oh. It's actually been around since about the 50s or the 60s. But the trouble with that, around then, they would throw them into, in, into in, 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 in mental health centers because they didn't want to deal with them. Mm. Yeah, they put them yeah. in the insane asylums. Oh. Yeah, they put them there and just leave them. Wow. Yeah. Autism has been around forever, but it's staggering the amount of mm-hmm. cases that we have now. Where it used yes. to be like one in a thousand, now it's like, what is it? Like one in 30 or something? Oh, one, one in 36. One in 36. Wow. One in 36. And then I read where it said, I think one in five boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boys so- have it more. So, because you know we all black, so I, I mean, I, I grew up around that kind of thinking. Yeah, that that mm-hmm. boy just need his ass kicked, and mm-hmm. you know, I'm just wondering about like a lot of a lot of kids. You know, I just wonder about those kids that just got their ass kicked for, uh, and maybe they were autis- uh, autistic or or whatever. But I'm just wondering, like, how, how did those kids turn out? I'm just wondering about that. You know what? They're probably somewhere just existing in the world, not even knowing what goes on around them. A lot of them are really bright. They can grow up and live alone. They have families. They get jobs. They learn how to drive cars, just like everyone else. Yes. You know what? That's one thing I I want you to say. Like, yes, Johnny has autism, but autism does not define who he is. Yeah. Yeah, I always say, I have a saying where I say, Johnny has autism. Autism doesn't have him. Welcome to Cherry's World. Would you like to advertise on Cherry's World and have your product placed on Cherry's social media for the world to see? Email us now at cherriesworldpodcast at gmail.com for low introductory rates. Cherry's World Podcast. Get heard. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to tell us before you go? Oh, yes, absolutely. To the newly diagnosed, you know, um, I'm open to advocating for all children and parents that come to me, but especially the newly diagnosed, they, they definitely need the most help because they are completely lost. I know I was lost. I was lost. So newly diagnosed, please. That's a lot. Please and tell, tell them again how to find you. My website is www.lashondawallaceinc.com. Scroll down. You can hit the contact list or the email and it'll bring you straight to the email or you can call me the phone number sitting there too the phone number is sitting there a lot of people wouldn't do that thank you so much Ms. Wallace for joining us this I am you, I'm bored. I need a nap like I'm mentally exhausted just thinking yeah. about the teachers at his old school because I really want to go up there <laughs> <laughs> listen it, 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 it would do you no good now the, the same people still work there with other children 
um, which is, I fear, I fear for those children because I'm almost positive nothing has changed. Ms. Wallace, I'd love to have you come back another time and let's talk about homeschool if you're open. Absolutely. I will come back as many times as, as you allow me to speak, honey. This is, I'm very passionate about this. Thank you so much. Call this home. If you got something to tell us, call us up and let us know about it. Nice meeting you. I will. Nice meeting you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, bye bye. Bye bye. This is Cherry's World. Courtney, you hear how all the women go <laughs> when you say nice meeting you. And then you're like, nice meeting you. Is that sexy voice, Courtney? Uh, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> hey, but you know, you, I told you this uh, personally that uh, you do a great job, you know, interviewing people. Like, real talk, you do a real great job. Like, thank you so much, but you keep me on track. Well, you know what? Um, man, that was that, that was just because I had these discussions, and I'm just be on, I'd be on the fence on all this stuff because I, I was the boy, uh, and I remember just being bad. I mean, and I know, uh, to, I don't want to confuse all, all the, but when she said ADHD. I had a girl um, at uh, at work when I was like 27. She's like, "Yeah, you special. You you didn't you didn't get that checked on when you was a kid, <laughs> you know." And I was wow. just trying to make her laugh, you know what I mean? But it, it, it was just like it just made me think about like boys, just the, the testosterone, the stuff that we do is just when I hear people just so quick to label. It's just I I just always wonder about that. Courtney, you know what's crazy is you were sitting there talking to her. I literally moved like seven times <laughs> while you guys were talking. Like I picked up the thing. I, I sat back. I sat back up. I, and I noticed, I said, oh, God, Courtney's sitting up all straight. You know, he ain't moved. And then she said, rocking back and forth. I found myself. Like, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> see, see, that's oh, like, like, I don't even know if you noticed this. I don't know if you want to air this part. But like, like when we recorded last week. And we were like face to face. And like my son, my, my oldest son, that's one of the things they said about him. He's like real shy at around other people. Now at home, he's a stone cold fool. But like if he meets people, he's shy. He's just real shy. He doesn't make eye contact. And I'm like, where, the hell, where does he get that from? But then I notice even with myself, like I haven't made eye contact with you yet. Like I'm, it's like I'm just not ready to do that yet. It's just something that I have like. I guess we all just grow into like, you know, and, and I'm I just, shy too. I don't talk to strangers. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like when I go out, I am not the person who enters the room and says, hi, my name is Cherry Johnson. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm like, you know, when people come up to me, I talk back because I don't want to be rude. Yeah. But I'm not like, you know, gung ho. <laughs> hey world, see me. I'm kind of an introvert. And then like my, my, my youngest son, he's the exact opposite. He'll, if he met you, he'll just, start talking about something but if you ask him a question instead of him just saying he doesn't know the answer he would probably just make up a story or something <laughs> or just make up something now he's four years old he's not like your four-year-old but i love that oh my four-year-old's crazy you know she <laughs> will enter a room and be like i've arrived <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and i just, do not know where she gets that from and so i, I just i just look at like these kids are so different and it's like I just feel like sometimes people are just lazy and instead of them just trying to sit, do their job, like how you just work with your daughter, you know what I mean? Instead of them just doing their job, they're like, oh, this kid is uh, this, or this kid is that. So maybe yes. you can send him to here or send her to there or, you know, instead of just doing your job. That's what I, that's what I hear when I, when I hear people labeling stuff, that's what I hear. Like, yes. And let me put this out there. My daughter does not have autism. I just choose to homeschool her because she's very advanced. Yeah. Um, she literally came out talking. One of the nurses in the hospital will tell you, because she looked at me and said, did you just hear that? She said, mama, while they were weighing her one night and they wow. went to do her ear test and she was probably three days old. I had to stay in the hospital for a while because I had a lot of issues. Right. But my daughter's just, she was reading by the time she was um, 16 months. So she's just not, the average child. So yeah. that's why I choose to homeschool because I feel like if I put her right now in a pre-kindergarten class is what she would go to by her age. Well, they could um, dumb. Be well, one or two things would happen. Either they would completely dumb her down mm -hmm. or they would kick her out of class because she would try to be the teacher. 
Yeah. You know, she's four, but she's in second grade. And I'll tell you the truth, but I won't tell her. She has four weeks more work. And then she's completed with what they told her she needs to be completed with with second grade. Because I am not comfortable moving her to third grade by the time, because she's still going to be four. Yeah. I don't want a four-year-old in third grade. Right, right, so right. I have bought extra books like she's doing and she she hasn't even figured it out yet but she's doing a whole different curriculum in math and she's got a whole new language arts that she's going to be doing and so it's kind of like her starting over (laughs) just because i'm not ready for her to be finished i'm gonna try to make second grade last a whole year if i can that's dope that's dope man that's good i I don't know if it's gonna work though you know you buy these kids like like her math book which is the same math curriculum that everybody in our state is using. Yeah. You finished in a month. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's what happens when you have just one-on-one, you know, you can, Yes. that's, that's one of the benefits. So. Yes. And we only do school for, you know, everybody's like, Oh my God, you must just have her doing school all day. We do school for an hour and 20 minutes every day. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I believe it. I mean, cause you, that's one-on-one. Yeah. That's, that's good, man. I, I wish, I wish, shit, hell, I, I wish I could do that. <laughs> I wish all parents had the liberty to homeschool because I think that, you know, we would see a huge difference in the education and not to, oh, yeah. especially black children, because unfortunately, like my daughter, now that's one thing that she is not learning like everybody else. ABCmouse.com killed us because they started talking about slavery. My daughter came to me and I think she was like two or three when she was doing it. She came to me and said, mom, am I going to be a slave? One of the things they start embedding in our kids' heads is their only history is slavery and they're less than, and it's a play on their self-esteem. So her history until she's probably going to be in about fourth or fifth grade. Now she does know about slavery because I had to have that whole conversation with her and she does know about president Lincoln and a lot of presidents, but she is not taught American history. She is taught black history, right. which people don't say is America. It is American history, but like her history book is called Our History, His Story, and is by Blessed Heritage. And that's what we're working off right now. Um, we have those black um, history flashcards. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is by the Urban Intelligence and the yeah. other one is ABC and Me. That right now will be her history, at least until she's about six or seven she won't learn anything else that way they can't play on her self-esteem by the time she gets in the real world she's going to know exactly who she is and her foundation and how powerful her people really are that's good and we all need to know that absolutely (laughs) especially if we teach her imagine the difference of every black person in this country would be if that's the history they got before we got his story Hmm. yeah our self-esteem would just be so much different. You're right, because I mean that's that's exactly how they teach us that we started as slaves. And yeah. it, and it makes me wonder, like a thing about that Kanye West song about diamonds. Like, is that the reason why we are so, you know, like we love chains so much and jewelry like not ju- not jewelry, but I'm talking about like the big chains. It almost makes you wonder. Cause I was watching um the Milwaukee yes. I was watching the Milwaukee Bucks game, right? And um Aaron Rodgers you know, he's rich. You know who that is, right? He's a yes, quarterback, okay. All right. quarterback <laughs> for the Green Bay Packers. And um and then, then they show Gucci Man. And you know, Gucci got Gucci got some dollars. And so um now both of them are rich. I don't, maybe Aaron might have one, I don't know. But <laughs> Gucci is sitting there with a big I'm assuming it's platinum chain on around his neck. I mean it's huge. Aaron's got a you know, a hoodie. And uh, you know, a baseball cap on. I mean, they're the same. They're the same people. And I just wonder, like, is that is that is that like instilled in us that we need to have that around our neck? I don't know. It just makes me wonder. Let me tell you, because a lot of black people see material as success. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an aunt who everything is about. You know, what purse do you have? What bag do you have? What that to her is success. I went home. And I'm from a small town in Pittsburgh called Duquesne. And I was sitting on the porch and these 
teenagers, I was a, I was a young adult at the time, walked up and I guess they called themselves punking me. You know, the first thing that came out their mouth was, what, you took all your jewelry home to come home? You were scared to hit the hood with your jewelry <laughs> on? And I looked up and I said, what the fuck is you talking about? I wear a pair of earrings and the same ring every single day, regardless of where I go. Or And I had my, my earrings on and, you know, my ring on then. But materialistic things does not define success. And Black people are so lost. Diamonds have no value. The only value they have are the value that white people have put on them. Right. Think about it. Africa is rich in diamonds. Diamonds is a pressured rock, period, right? Right. Africans are suffering. Well, not all of Africa, but seriously suffering and have no money. But they're being robbed by white men who are bringing diamonds over here to the United States, putting a false price tag on them, and people are losing their minds and their lives Oh. over this rock because other people have told them that it's a precious stone. Now, you want to know how precious it is? Take that very diamond that you have on your finger and try to resell it and see what you get for it. Oh, right. <laughs> how much success is that? Yeah. You get more luck. About driving. You know if you drive a car off the lot, right? right. You don't get no money for it. Same thing with a diamond. Yep. That is true. Ridiculous. That's true. That is true. Yeah, I just, I remember looking at it I was like, maybe last night. It was just, wow. Like, they're both rich, but one <laughs> one looks like an average guy. The other one, I mean. But are they really rich? Like, do, does does Gucci have what they say he has? Uh, Probably not. Sorry, mm-hmm. Gucci. Look at Dr. Dre. Look at P. Diddy. Yeah. They're not walking around with all that jewelry on. Not anymore. It seemed like as they got richer. (laughs) Dre Dre never did. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. yeah. Puffy was flashy with his, you know, Louis Vuitton shirts and stuff. But if you listen and you learn about their history, they were wearing that same exact. They had like three Louis Vuitton shirts and they were on rotation. Hmm. And they wore the same ones in different cities. And when they didn't have the one on this, because it had, it was stinking. It had to go and get clean. Hey, that's crazy about the West Coast rappers. Now, you just made me think, I mean, this might be off subject, but there's like no flashy West Coast rapper. I can't, I mean, it may, if there is one, I mean, I guess the game might be the closest one, but that, that's crazy. Like NWA, they made their whole <laughs> claim Did to fame wearing uh, LA Raiders caps. It, it, right? Swap meet clothes, apparently, yeah. because they owned million dollar homes. They were into real estate. The West Coast rappers are taught about money. You yeah. know, either you're wearing it or you're keeping it in your pocket. If you hit those guys up, they don't, you know, it's so funny that you say this because they don't have a wad of money in their pocket. Yeah. That's what poor guys do. Yeah. You have $10,000, you got 9500 in your pocket. And the other one's just, the other money's just there to keep your bank account open. The West Coast rappers, they got a piece of plastic most of the time and maybe a 20. Yeah. Because I mean, they're taught about money. Yeah, and they and I mean they they walk around with Chuck Taylors and, and Levi's. Whereas the East Coast rappers, I mean, anything name brand, that's what they do. And yeah, maybe but, even the guys in the South too, but And a lot of them are renting apartments, unfortunately. That's crazy. Now, I don't know. Some of them dudes from the South, though, what I can tell you is, yes, they are a little flashy, Mm -hmm. but because of the standard of living in the South and the cost of living, they do own their homes. Oh, yeah. Which is nice to see. Those guys in Texas and Houston, they got money. Atlanta, too. Atlanta, too. Yeah, they spend money. They own their properties. So that's, you know, if if you got your ducks in order, then yes, it makes sense. But if you ain't got your ducks in order, yeah. I'm sorry, I just can't walk around with, you know, diamonds and platinum and stuff all on me. That's just not who I am. What, My like, ring, I have a beautiful ring. Yeah. And it was a gift. And uh, lately, I'm wearing a pair of earrings my baby gave me, my daughter gave me for Mother's Day. Oh. Well, I mean, like for me, like, you know, I'm not, I need to get better, but I'm not personally on social media, um, like 
like most people are. And I'm gonna tell you this: what 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 happened was one time I was on there, I was f- fake flossing, I guess, <laughs> and, and and someone dear to me called me up and asked me for a nice amount of money, and I was like, I ain't got it. And he's like, No, 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 I really need it. And I said, Okay. Uh, well, I'll take this part out. I said, I called my wife. And I was like, look, this, we, we might need to go in the 401k or something like this. It's a situation. He's like, no, 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 no. I don't need it like that. I need cash and I'm going to give it back to you in three days more, but I need it now. No. I, was like, I ain't got it, bro. Like, you know what I mean? And he was so upset. And he just couldn't understand. Like, like I would do anything for that guy because he would do anything for me. But I mean, I'm glad. I guess turn looking back, I'm like, I'm glad I didn't, <laughs> you know, get myself involved in that. But you know, but that's what fake flossing to do because you never know when someone might, you know, really check you on that. Like, you know, like okay, you say you got it, so like, what's up? <laughs> you know what I'll mean? be on my Instagram uh, fake flossing, and people ask me for money in my inbox every single day. Yeah, and I every single day, I say man. no. See, I couldn't deal with that. You know, you just reminded me. It's so funny. You said uh, fake flossing. So there's this porn star, right? A porn star? In, yeah, a porn okay, star. Okay, you got my attention. Go ahead. Yeah, it's a man. <laughs> oh, okay. Did I lose it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there's a porn star in my inbox who actually asked me for money, and I've never met him, and I told him no. And he was pissed off at me that I would not give him this money, and he was going to give me the money back in a couple of days. He needed to go and do this uh, porn shoot, and then he would have the money and he would pay me back. Long story short, the porn shoot got, I guess, canceled and he didn't get the money. And I started laughing. I said, see, that's why I didn't give you any money. Because if I would have, the shoot got canceled today, you couldn't have paid me back anyway. Where, hey, where is he from? Um, San Fernando Valley in California. You know what? <laughs> when I was out the same time I met Jaleesa, I met um, somebody at the club and it was a girl and she just, you know, we was, we were set up straight because of the record label that we were with and we were set up straight. And so I had never had this conversation with anybody before. She said, Hey, I need $17,000. Like I'm talking about the (laughs) same night, the same night. And I was like, $17,000. Like I don't got like, like, nah, I don't got it. No, 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 look. So after I said no, okay, put me in touch with your people. We need I need to get the seventeen thousand dollars tonight. Like we just met. So I started getting nervous. You know, I'm from Chicago. So I'm looking around like, you know, is this like, you know, what's going on? You know, this is LA. So I don't know, you know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking like this must be a setup, you know what I mean? Cause the way she's talking and stuff. And I'm like, how how do you walk up to somebody? And just ask for that kind of money. Like $17 I can get, but anything over that, I'm like, how do you just walk up to a stranger and ask for that kind of money? i never forget that. And she was with a, a, a company. I forget the name of the company, but she was like, yeah, we need some. And I, and I, and I didn't even see what What did she need the money for? I mean, she lost my attention after that, but I just couldn't, I just didn't understand like, how do you, I just understand how people can ask, but I guess, you know, closed mouths don't get fed, but I mean, there's a lot of people that will walk up to you and ask for that kind of, money. maybe I should have been doing that kind of stuff, but. Right. Oh, speaking of, did you see this guy who met this woman online? He dated her, I guess, for like one week online and married her and then G'd her, scammed her out of $80,000. Did Damn. you see him? How you, man, that's crazy. I don't know, but I definitely don't meet the right people and I'm definitely living wrong. Like Antoine Terra and I have been looking for an investor for a film for five years and we have yet to find somebody to invest in us. And and we're talking about paperwork, contracts, you know, trying to do it right. And this dude dates somebody for a week. Come on, whoever is gonna let me scam him out of 80 grand That's crazy. In, in a week from, you know, you wanna marry me, Holla at me in my inbox with something like that rather than right. these fetish dudes. It's like, what color are your toenails today? I would suck your feet so good. That's the kind of stuff I get in my inbox. And <laughs> hey, we're going to do a segment one day, just Cherry's inbox and just read off a lot of that shit. Oh my God, we should totally do it. Do you do you want me to start right now? I, I mean, that's up to you. 
I can make a drop for it. Cherry's inbox. And just read it. Welcome to Cherry's world.